Hello, this is Dr. Grande. Today the question is, what is conscientiousness? Now, when I refer to the term conscientiousness, I'm talking about the personality trait of conscientiousness that we see in the five-factor model personality, also known as the Big Five. So, looking at the Big Five model first, you can think of the five personality traits as being contained in this acronym, OCEAN. It's an easy way to remember it. O-C-E-A-N. Openness to experience, conscientiousness, extroversion, agreeableness, and neuroticism. So conscientiousness, of course, that second personality trait in the acronym there. And when we think of these different personality traits, a lot of times we think of a higher level or lower level of a certain trait as being associated with more life satisfaction or more success and having the opposite measurement on that same trait as being more associated with lower life satisfaction. So when we look at conscientiousness, what we're really talking about here is impulse control. Uh, that's really the cornerstone of conscientiousness. So individuals that are more conscientious, that are higher on that conscientiousness personality trait, tend to be able to control impulses. They tend to plan out activities carefully. They prioritize well. They're fairly well organized. They're good at analysis in the sense that they take the time to analyze. So they think through situations carefully and tend to have good orientation toward detail. They like a set schedule and they tend to be considered prudent. Individuals who are high in conscientiousness are reliable. And I think this is one of the main reasons that employers tend to favor individuals that have a higher level of conscientiousness. Generally, they're considered higher performing, better employees. And if looking at the evidence surrounding conscientiousness, people that are higher in conscientiousness tend to be more successful in terms of their career. Some other characteristics we see associated with conscientiousness, people that are high in conscientiousness tend to have a lot of self-discipline. They have less interaction, less negative interaction with the criminal justice system. They tend to do better in school. And they, in general, are more concerned with appearances. So they'd be more likely to look at matching colors in terms of apparel or colors that go well with one another. Their work environments tend to be more organized and clean. So in general, they just seem to have more of an interest in how things look, how things appear, and maybe how others will perceive that. So when we think of these personality traits, as I mentioned before, we tend to think of high in a personality trait or low, depending on which personality trait it is, that can be associated with satisfaction. And with conscientiousness, it seems fairly clear that a higher level of conscientiousness is good, to put it simply. There are a lot of desirable outcomes that occur as a result of being conscientious. However, like the other personality traits in the Big Five model, there is a downside to any type of extreme. Now with some of these personality traits, it's a little easier to see the downside. For example, with extroversion and agreeableness, Clearly, being too extroverted or too agreeable may not work in a lot of situations. And as a matter of fact, with those two personality traits, there seems to be more of a balance. Introversion versus extroversion and disagreeableness versus agreeableness. With conscientiousness, though, there is not much of a downside. But if you look at extreme conscientiousness, we would have someone who's at higher risk of obsessive compulsive type behavior having more of a perfectionist attitude and having difficulty concluding an analysis and acting on the results of that analysis. And sometimes we refer to this as analysis paralysis. This is someone who stays in that analysis phase for a long time and never really makes a decision or takes them a long time to make a decision. So too much conscientiousness can be negative. When we think about low conscientiousness, we think about individuals who are more likely to be disorganized and act on impulses. And we know that 
this can oftentimes lead to difficulty. So with conscientiousness, we see clear advantages for being conscientious. Of course, at the extremes, it can be problematic, and being low in conscientiousness can be problematic. So what about where it comes from? How does somebody become conscientious? Well, like all the personality traits, there is a genetic component. Although the research provides different answers in terms of how strong that genetic component is for the conscientiousness trait. So if you look at some research, it says that genetics account for about 50% of this trait, and other research is much lower. Mostly all research, however, agrees that conscientiousness does have a biological basis. We also know that an individual who is raised by affectionate parents tends to be more conscientious, and individuals who had distant parents tend to have a lower level of conscientiousness. So we're not really sure where it comes from, but we know that genetics and environment both play a role. So if conscientiousness is positive, can someone become conscientious? Well, personality traits are relatively stable over time. They do change a little bit, however. And with conscientiousness, it tends to go down in adolescence, and it tends to increase from that point on as individuals grow older. In terms of changing the actual personality trait deliberately, so looking at any of the personality traits and making an active effort to change them, it is difficult to actually change personality traits, although there's evidence that some change can occur. And certainly, if you look at the behaviors associated with the personality trait, changes can be made there. So using the example of extroversion versus introversion, clearly someone who's extroverted may need to be more introverted at some points so they can behave more introverted. The same thing with somebody who's disagreeable. Someone who's high in disagreeableness can act agreeable. They can behave in an agreeable manner when they need to. It doesn't change the personality trait, but the behavior can be modified. So if you're looking to be more conscientious, think about trying to become more organized, prioritizing, trying to make decisions a little more slowly, thinking through things, paying attention to details, trying to stay on a schedule, and trying to be generally more reliable. Those are all really just behaviors. So the personality trait may not change, but those behaviors can be changed to some degree. There's also some evidence to support the idea that if we try to change certain personality traits, if we try to exhibit the behaviors that, that we don't have, for example, if somebody's low in conscientiousness and they try to be more conscientious, that over time that can actually influence personality. So it is important to keep in mind the distinction between a personality trait and a behavior. Personality traits are difficult to change, although some change may be possible, behaviors can be changed. I hope you found this description of conscientiousness to be interesting. Thanks for watching.